A common point of contention when discussing AI-generated art is whether AI-generated art is actually art. A lot of people feel that the entire process of putting in prompts into an AI image generator and getting an image out of it is not really something that should be considered art. What they don't know is that in the AI art generation process, there is a lot more involved than just typing in a prompt into an AI art generator. And if you're a frequent visitor of this channel, you know what kind of effort needs to go into creating workflows that actually create useful, controlled, and interesting art. Well, the tool I'm gonna show you guys today absolutely puts that discussion to bed. While you can make use of the tool if you're not an artist, if you are an artist, this tool is going to take your AI generated art to a completely different level. Not only will it let you get to a final image much faster, along with any details that you feel are particularly pertinent, it's fantastic for maintaining stability across multiple images where you need to maintain the same character, and it can massively increase the speed at which you create images. And if you're not an artist, it's a great way for you to exert some control into the images that you're creating, particularly when a prompt is not quite catching exactly what you need. Is the pose not right? Is the facial expression not there? Or is the prompt just not picking up the character's hair color? So without wasting any more time, we're just gonna dive right in. So the tool in question is from an app that I've covered before on this channel called Scenario. And while this video is sponsored by them I don't take sponsors lightly I oftentimes reject more sponsor requests than I accept because I look for partners that will actually provide value for you guys so please don't click away come and check this out I really think it's something that you guys need to pay attention to once you've signed up or signed in if you already have an account you'll get taken to a screen like this now scenario can do a whole bunch of things including allowing you to create custom Lora's consistent character models and so on but today we're going to dive into the live painting feature to access that you can find it here on the side panel look for the little pencil and go and click on live from here you'll be asked to choose a model and this is where things start to get really interesting now scenario have a whole bunch of ready-to-use models models on their platform that act as a fantastic starting point for you to generate images. They've got them in Flux, SDXL, and SD 1.5. And when you find a NARD style that you particularly like, you can go ahead and pick it and start designing. Alternatively, let's say that you've used their platform to train a character Laura. So in this case, I have a few character Lauras over here that I've set up with Flux. When we get into the painting, the painting will heavily reference the Laura that you've set up so that you can get that consistent character design. So for today, we're going to grab this Vanessa model. Once you've selected the model that you want to paint with, you'll get taken to a screen like this. On the left hand side is your canvas and on the right hand side is what the final image will look like. Now, this does work best if you have a tablet. If you're a Mac user and you've got a iPad like I do over here, you can extend your screen over to the iPad and basically duplicate it so that your iPad becomes your tablet. That's what I'm doing now. Along with the Apple Pencil, we're gonna go ahead and start sketching. Now, I'm an absolutely terrible artist Part of why I'm really drawn to AI image generation is I have tried to learn to draw and be an artist for many years. Back since I was in high school, I have piles and piles and piles of notebooks, piles and piles and piles of art books of me attempting to learn how to draw. And it just never happened. I did pick up some of the basics, but I am still a terrible artist. And being able to take my limited skills and turn them into a final piece of art is incredibly fulfilling to me. A lot of artists may find that using generative AI cheapens the output of their work, but as someone like me who has put in years of effort in trying to learn how to draw and still not being able to, it's incredibly rewarding. So now that we've got the canvas here, you can just go ahead and start drawing. So we're gonna go ahead and draw a character that kind of looks like Vanessa wearing a blue robe, and let's see how we go from there. So we're gonna go ahead and grab the sketch tool here and let's give her a blue robe okay and of course before we start drawing to make sure that we get an image that we can work with we need to just drop in a very simple prompt in this case i'm just going to put here vanessa wearing a blue dress you don't even need to press enter just type that in and now as we draw it will draw from the laura and apply it to the image so let's go ahead now and kind of make this weird shoulder thing. Uh, it is a bit difficult to draw right now as my computer's lagging because I am recording this live, but it works fine when I'm not recording, but we'll do our best. Okay, so we've got 
the edge over here, draw a bit over here. We'll kind of do like this big shouldered dress. Oh, this is absolutely horrible. And you can already see here that it's starting to generate an image. Now it is coming out with a lifelike image, but it's already picking up aspects of what I'm drawing. It's got the dress. It's got the kind of V shaped component here, which we can see here on the character that it's creating. It's got the blue dress. And as we continue to draw, it will improve on the detail. Now the final, the style of the final image is also very heavily dependent on the way that I've captioned the Laura. I will show you again using one of the animated models as I haven't quite finished training and captioning this model, but I wanted to show how we can kind of keep the character consistent. We're going to go ahead and finish shading that in. Now, uh, I will say this is incredibly therapeutic. So if you are not a great artist and you wanted to draw as a form of therapy, just messing around with scenario is so much fun. So I did look up the model details and the way that it's captioned is I forgot to put a name token. So we will just put here an anime woman. And based on how the model is currently captioned, that should get us a little bit closer to the Laura style that we have set. Okay, while that generates, we're gonna keep on drawing. Now, one of the challenges with scenario, and I have suggested this to them, is create a palette of commonly used colors in this case, you know, we're trying to draw the character, the character's face, arms, and so on, and we need a skin tone color. So what I've done is I have put together a palette of commonly used colors. I'll put them down in the description below. Okay, here's one that I like. And you can see now that the character in question is looking a little bit more like the model that we selected. You know, the hairstyle is kind of right. The anime style is there. But let's keep drawing it out. So we've picked a skin tone and we want to add in some shoulders over here. Okay, put her neck up here. And like I said, you don't have to be a particularly good artist. You can see here, I'm just drawing very general shape and my proportions are absolutely horrendous. But you know, the scenario does a pretty good job of fixing that and just getting the general gist of what it is that you're trying to do. And wherever you do have an area that's not quite coming out right, you can help it along by adjusting the prompt down below. So in this case, we've got the bare shoulders here. I'm not sure if it's gonna pick that up, but we can give that suggestion a little bit later if it's not being picked up. And you can see here, my, my arms are just, they're disgusting, like genuinely embarrassed to show this to you guys. Absolutely not helped by the fact that I'm getting terrible computer lag. So let's add in the hair here. We know that she's got kind of a fringe, so we're gonna do our best to try and put that in. We are running into some slight issues here. Um, that has more to do, again, with my laptop's performance rather than scenario. It's just being very slow at picking up some of these strokes. And you can see, you know, with this unfinished image, as it keeps rendering, even though my drawing is absolutely horrible, we have a pretty good image here with a lot of the details and the main kind of strokes picked up in the image. Now, if you're an artist and you're able to work with an incredible amount of detail as you go in and put in more detail, that will again get picked up by the model and appear in the final image. And I will try and add some few details here in the dress and you can see how it gets picked up. And there you go. I mean, I mean, if we have a look at this, we can see that it hasn't fully picked up what we're trying to get through here. And that's more to do with my terrible drawing. But the fact that we've got the dress having these big shoulders sticking out here, those are picked up by the model in a completely different form, but it's still a blue flowy dress. The character Laura is very much intact. The arm position over here on the left has been picked up as well. And the hand quality is maintained. We're not getting any weirdness in the hand. The only thing that it didn't really pick up very well is this arm over here on the right, probably because it couldn't figure out what it was. However, if we come down here and we put here an anime woman wearing a blue dress, if we change it to sleeveless, that should again help direct it in the right direction. So now you can see here by tweaking the prompt slightly, we're a lot closer to what we want with this kind of strapless look with the, the shoulders kind of sticking out. It's close enough to what I was trying to achieve. So now that we're here, let's go ahead and try in and add some details. So we're gonna add a red detail to the dress. Okay, just a couple of lines and you'll see how as an artist, putting in these little details can really help bring your AI generated image to life without needing to spend too much time on the image, allowing you to you know, either increase your output or create a much more detailed image with a shorter amount of time. Okay, so we've just kind of added these two little red lines here. Hopefully they will appear in the final image as some form of little detailing. And you might have noticed as the generations happen, the details in the face do change a little bit. The eye colors change a couple of times. 
Again, that has more to do with the quality of the LoRa that I've used. It's got a very few set of images. This is kind of a work in progress that I'm doing. I just decided to use it for this video to showcase that even with a limited LoRa, we have a relatively good level of consistency. And what's amazing about this is when we kind of have an image that we're relatively happy with, we can now start to iterate through it by changing little things and keeping things relatively consistent. So let's say I was using this for an animation and I just wanted to move one arm, let's say from the side of the arm to another position, I can keep everything else in the image the same and it will just generate that one change that I've made. So it can be very, very powerful in all kinds of workflows. So it did not pick up the red item, but let's just add in here red detail and hopefully that brings a little bit more attention to it. Like with text prompting, this does require a little bit of finesse and tweaking as ultimately it comes down to what elements the model is deciding to pay attention to in your sketch and helping it along with the prompt can go a long way. There we go. So you can see here now in the final image, with a little bit of tweaking and a little bit of helping in the prompt, it's applied that those red lines in the form of a stitching here on the dress. And we can see it here uh, on the bustier, on the sleeves. And I genuinely don't know how you could get that level of precision and detail just with text prompting. And as you saw at the beginning of the video, you know, this is an animated character, but you can apply this exact same technique with photographic Loras. So, you know, you can take your AI influencer, pose her out by drawing or sketching out kind of what you wanted to do, the environments and so on. And you can get a final image that you can continue to reuse. If you're designing backgrounds for a game, you just need to lay out the key elements and the scenario model will take care of the rest. I mean, you can see here now in this variation of the model, it's picked up the additional stitching that I drew here and it's just brought it down to the side of the dress and it actually looks fantastic. And it's even picked up the arm that I had drawn over here on the right and it's kind of put it here behind the character model. And the fidelity is great, the image quality is great, and all in all, I genuinely think that this particular tool should be a part of your workflow if you're any kind of artist. Whether you use generative AI or not, this can bring so much productivity and efficiency to your workflow. I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you are interested in taking advantage of this amazing tool by Scenario, I do have a discount code down below in the description. I think we are giving an extra 30% for the first 10 or 15 users that sign up for it. So don't waste time, head on down, sign on up, and please come by our Discord and share anything that you create. I would love to hear the about your experiences with Scenario. What are some of the outputs that you're creating? Do you have any techniques or workflows that work especially well? Please come by and share it with us. And if you like these videos, please do consider supporting me on Patreon. You guys out there genuinely help me make these videos happen. It's expensive trying to sign up to all of these platforms to try and put time in to generate these tutorials for you guys and having that support on Patreon makes it possible. We also have a bunch of exclusive goodies for you guys out there, including Patreon only workflows, as well as other cool bits and bobs that come out there. Finally, don't forget to like and subscribe. It helps tremendously with the YouTube algorithm. Thanks, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.